BBC Radio Bristol. Sunday breakfast with me, Lucy Tegg. Wimbledon does indeed start tomorrow. In the next half hour of the show, I'll be talking to a member of the Christian group Love All, Serve All, which uh, patrols the overnight queues and the outdoor screens during the Wimbledon tournament, offers help and support wherever they can. And they will continue to do so this year, despite fewer people being involved around Wimbledon. Um, But first, uh, let's talk to Louise Price. Louise is from Price of Bath, a company based in Box, which is on the edge of Bath. And the last tennis ball manufacturer in the Western world. They've re- recently launched the world's first recycled tennis ball uh, called the Phoenix, which they're hoping will make a positive impact on the damage caused by the sale of 320 million balls sold worldwide each year. I'm so glad they keep account. Louise joins me. Good morning, Louise. Morning, morning. Lovely to talk to you this morning. First of all, I'm quite surprised that uh, recycled material hasn't been used for tennis balls in the past. I know there's a question we've been asked quite a lot. It, it's because it's quite difficult. You know, a, a tournament ball has to have precise um, measures um, to be played, so with the right bounce, the right weight, um, and the right compression or hardness. And the minute you, in, you start to put recycled content or recycled balls or rubber into a, a ball, it loses its performance. So whilst it looks like a tennis ball, it, it's, not, it's no good to hit. So that's what we've been developing a way around that and it's um it's been tricky but we're there and we, we love it so you've probably had um, a lot of um reject along the way have you oh my goodness thousands thousands um, <laughs> um so so tell me why it is so difficult is it the texture of recycled rubber what what why does it lose so much of its quality through being recycled well most uh, most of a, a tennis ball is um you know at least te- is a 70 percent rubber there's only 30% of something else in there. And um, when you start to change that balance, it's the rubber that gives the ball the bounce. And when you lower the rubber, um, you start to change everything about it. So putting um, old rubber, um, whatever you do to it, it just becomes too difficult because it's hard or it's already been used. Um, but um, we found a way around to reprocess it. Um, and that's, you know, it's great. It's it, it's um, it's still a challenge. It's not as easy as making normal tennis balls. Um, you still have to do lots of different processes. But um, yeah, it's it's really good. We're very pleased. Mm-hmm. Very How far proud. off are you then from from it being used in a tournament like Wimbledon? Well, you know, obviously Wimbledon clearly got their own sponsorships and arrangements. Um, you know, already there, we're making a ball that's manufactured to international tennis specification. Uh, the next step for us is to submit it for approval. Um, to the International Tennis Federation. Um, and then once it's got approval, technically it could be paid in um, any sanctioned LTA event. Um, and um, yeah, it would be fantastic to see if um, we could get it into some of the bigger tournaments. And uh, I know that um, the World Championships this year have, have been pledged um, to make a big commitment to sustainability right through to 2030. So who knows? We'll, we'll see, but we'll... Um, uh, for now, for now, we're just happy that people are, have got an option to to play with a recycled ball and and make a choice towards you know a better planet. Mm. Um, now, you, your company, um, you, it, we, when I was uh, just introducing you, now you, you, we we've said you were the last tennis ball manufacturer in the Western world. So, do you face a lot of competition from the Far East? Uh, well, yes, absolutely. We're a fraction of the size we used to be. Manufacturing in the UK is really hard work. Um, simply because we can't compete on price and um, the Far East obviously can make balls much cheaper than we can. So finding, that's what we've done for the last 20, 30 years, is find a niche for something a little bit different. And um, this has been a, our, our niche, finding a, a way around, thinking differently um, to, to a, another problem. And obviously it's, it's something that people are asking for or have been asking for. So... Um, the recycled ball, the Phoenix, and we're hoping that people are prepared to pay a little bit more English prices to be able to do that, to keep us going a bit longer. Uh, Louise, it's a great pleasure to talk to you this morning, and um, thank you for, for sharing us sharing with us your story of the, the Phoenix ball. That's Louise Price, who's from Price of Bath, a company based in Box, um, making tennis balls and um, recently launching their first recycled tennis ball, which is called the Phoenix, as you heard from Louise just now. Very difficult to um, get the materials right um, once they have been recycled to make a quality ball, but it looks like uh, that is something they have been able to 
uh, to do. We'll follow their progress, I am sure. Um, it's uh, an incredible number that we threw out there, just uh, off the cuff, that 320 million tennis balls are sold worldwide every year. Where do they go? 320 million tennis balls per year. Just an extraordinary figure, isn't it?